Hello, this is Dr. Ben Finio, along with Abby, Elmo, Cookie Monster, and Lego Guy. And in this video, we will be talking about Zoom breakout rooms, what they are, how you can use them, and a few things to look out for. We are here on day, who even knows, of this pandemic. I had hoped I wouldn't have to keep making these tutorial videos for the fall, but here we are. Now, before we talk about exactly how to do this in Zoom, let's talk about the structure of a typical Zoom meeting and the structure that you can get with breakout rooms. So a typical Zoom meeting, you can think of it set up kind of like a classroom where you have one instructor and a bunch of students in, say, a lecture hall, and everybody can see and hear everybody else. What breakout rooms will do is split your meeting up into smaller sub-meetings or rooms where people within each breakout room can only see and hear other people in that breakout room. They cannot see or hear people in the other breakout rooms. So conceptually, you can think of this as somewhat similar to a classroom where you have students seated around tables where they're talking and working together. The major difference being that obviously in a classroom, you can still look across the room or hear people talking at other tables if they're talking too loudly. Whereas in Zoom, there's a complete wall between these rooms. The people over here cannot talk to the people over here. And as the instructor, while well, you will initially be left by yourself back in the main meeting room, you can hop between these breakout rooms at will. So you can jump into any of them, similar to how you would physically walk around a classroom and check on what students are doing. And when you're in that meeting room, you can talk to and see everybody else just like you would in a normal Zoom meeting. Again, the major difference is that when you are in each individual breakout room, you cannot see and hear what the students are doing in the other breakout rooms. So that's a big difference between that and a classroom where when you're walking around, you would be able to keep an eye on what your other students are doing. Another important difference here is that regular meeting participants cannot move between rooms on their own. So if you were doing group work and, for example, having students shuffle between tables and rearrange their groups, that would be easy to do in a real classroom. It's not as easy to do in Zoom. You either need to make the students co-hosts if you trust them with that authority so they can move around on their own, or you will need to move them around yourself as the host. So while this is a great feature to enable smaller group discussion and work, especially in larger classes, you do need to make sure you're going to have some form of accountability. I've heard a lot from professors, especially teaching very large classes, where they set up breakout rooms, and then when they hop between them, the students aren't doing anything. It might just be a small group of two or three students who all have their cameras off and aren't talking to each other. So you should make sure you either have some sort of deliverable, so something the students are going to have to turn in or present when the breakout room session is over, or make it very clear that yourself or other co-hosts like the TAs are going to be hopping into the breakout rooms to check on them and see what they're doing. Otherwise, you risk the students just sitting there and not actually talking to each other. All right, that's enough of a conceptual overview. Let's talk about how you're actually going to do this in Zoom. So to set up the breakout rooms, you're going to click the breakout rooms button at the bottom of your screen. Zoom will then prompt you as to whether you want to set up the rooms automatically, meaning Zoom will randomly assign people to the rooms, or manually, meaning you will pick who goes in which room. So for small classes, or if you have certain groups of students you know you want to work together, you'll want to do that manually. For a very large lecture class, for example, with hundreds of students, you're almost definitely going to want to pick automatically because it would take you forever to click and drag and assign individual students to each room. One other caveat, there is an option to pre-assign students to breakout rooms if you know who's going to join the meeting in advance. I'm not going to cover instructions for that in this video, but I will link to Zoom's help page about it in the description. So in this case, I'm going to say I want to assign my four participants into two breakout rooms. I'm going to do it manually. I'm going to hit the Create Rooms button. I will then get this pop-up window where I have two breakout rooms created. Nobody is in them yet. I can click the Assign button. See, I'm going to put Abby and Cookie Monster in this first room and Elmo and Lego Guy in the second room. You can move people around then by hovering over their names and either moving them to another room or exchanging them with somebody in another room. Finally, there are some options down here at the bottom. For example, you can select to move all participants into the breakout rooms automatically. If you don't do that, then the participants will get a prompt asking them if they would like to join the room and they can choose to remain in the main meeting room. You can allow them to return back to the main meeting room or you can disable that option. You can set the breakout rooms to close automatically after a certain time period. And you can give everybody a heads up when you are about to close the breakout rooms. I definitely recommend this feature. Otherwise, you can tend to cut people off mid-sentence when you close the rooms and bring people back to the main meeting. 
So here I'm going to select move all participants into breakout rooms automatically, just since I am using toys and I would have to go around and click on all the computers to join the rooms otherwise, but you don't necessarily need to do that. Then I'm going to hit the open all rooms button and we'll see that will send everybody off into the breakout rooms. So it took a second for it to do it there, but now I am left all by myself in the main meeting room. Everybody else is off in their breakout rooms, so I can click on the breakout rooms button, see a list of who is in which room, and if I want to join one, I can click the join button next to that room. So let's do that. I'm going to join Abby and Cookie Monster in breakout room one. I'm going to click join breakout room one. It takes a second, I get a little pop-up that I am now in a breakout room, and you will see that I can now only see Abby and Cookie Monster. So you have to be careful here because not only can I no longer see Elmo and Lego Guy, they cannot see or hear me, and this is important, a mistake a lot of people make, each breakout room has its own chat. So this is a little misleading because when you open the chat, it still says everyone down here, but that really means everyone in this breakout room. So if I type breakout rooms will end in five minutes, that actually isn't going to go to people in the other breakout rooms. And I've also lost the previous chat history, so you, you don't see the previous main chat when you go into the breakout room. So this can make communication with the rest of the class a little difficult. Again, if you were in a real classroom, you could just walk around or raise your voice and everybody could hear you. So you can't do that using the chat feature. If you want to do that, you have to go back to breakout rooms and click broadcast message to all. So you can type a message here. For example, we will end breakout rooms in five minutes. When you type broadcast, that goes to everyone, but it does not show up in the chat. It shows up as a little pop-up message at the top of the screen, and it's not there for very long. So in my experience, this can be easy to miss. So I'm going to briefly show a screenshot of that message on what it looks like from Elmo's computer. And you can see Elmo only got this tiny little message up at the top of the screen, and I didn't time it, but it seems like it's only there for five or 10 seconds or so. So it doesn't show up as a permanent message in the chat. It's definitely easy to miss. So communication with people in the other breakout rooms can be a bit of a challenge when you are hopping between the rooms. Now, you can also have this communication problem in the other direction. What if your students need to get your attention? And again, in a real classroom, if you were walking around and they're working in groups, they could just raise their hand. You can see the entire room. That's not an issue. And you might ask, oh, why don't we just use Zoom's nonverbal feedback feature, if you're familiar with that, just like I would in a regular Zoom meeting with no breakout rooms. And the problem there is the participants window. When you're in breakout rooms, it only shows the participants in this breakout room. So participants do have a raise hand button here that normally they could use to get your attention in a class. But if somebody else in another breakout room raises their hand, you're not going to see it in your participants list. So your students have an option at the bottom of their screen called ask for help, and then it will give them an option to invite the host to their breakout room. So I'm going to go click that on Elmo's computer and you will see what it looks like on my screen. So Elmo has just clicked the invite host button and I get this little pop-up window asking me if I would like to join Elmo's breakout room. I can either select to join the room now or do it later. And in my experience, that can be nice if you don't have a lot of breakout rooms and a lot of students asking for help, but it can get really annoying if a lot of people are doing it all at once because you will keep getting those little pop-up windows and to the best of my knowledge, there's no way to block them. So if you are in the middle of a conversation with someone and you want to hold off on the other room for five minutes, you would need to go down to that broadcast message to all and say something like, I'm helping the people in room one now, please stop sending requests for help, I'll be there in a couple of minutes. Otherwise, your students can just continually spam you with those little pop-up windows and that can get pretty irritating. So let's say that I'm done helping Abby and Cookie Monster and I am ready to go join that other breakout room now. I would click breakout rooms at the bottom, select join breakout room two. And again, there's going to be a bit of a lag when it does that and Zoom does this weird thing where it resizes your window. So you'll need to maximize again if you had it maximized. 
and double check some depending on your meeting settings it might mute you again when you move between rooms so i already had myself muted here but if your meeting setting is mute on join i believe it mutes you each time you move to a new breakout room which can be kind of annoying so i am now in a breakout room with elmo and lego guy i can't see or hear abby and cookie monster anymore Again, you'll see if I go to my participants window, now that shows Elmo and Lego Guy. And if I open the chat, this is where it starts to get really confusing. So it looks like my chat and things I have said to everyone moved with me in my chat window. But for example, if I go look on Elmo's computer, who was in this separate breakout room when I typed this from the other breakout room earlier, this does not appear on Elmo's computer. So the chat can definitely get kind of confusing in terms of who sees what. So be really careful when relying on this if you think all students are going to see it. Again, that broadcast to all is the surefire way to make sure all students see your message. So hopefully you understand how to set up and move between these rooms now. Again, I would recommend hopping around to check in on your students and see what they're doing or making sure you have some sort of deliverable so they can prove that they actually did some work during these breakout rooms. If at any point you are ready to leave and just go back to the main room so you don't want to be spying on any of the students and you just want to let them have their discussions without you, you can always hit the leave room button and you can either end the meeting for everyone, leave the meeting, or just leave the breakout room. So be careful that you don't accidentally end the entire class. Leave the breakout room. Again, you'll get a bit of a lag as you return to the main session. And you can see now I am back to just me in the main session so I can let the students finish all their work. Again, there's Zoom reminding me that I'm muted every time I move around. And when you're ready to end all the breakout rooms and call students back to the main session, again, hopefully you set that setting so it'll give a 60-second countdown that will display on all the students' screens so you don't just cut them off mid-sentence. But you click the breakout rooms button, hit close all rooms. It gives you this little notification that all participants have been given a 60-second countdown. They can leave earlier and come back if they want to. Otherwise, they will all see this similar countdown, and then once that reaches zero, it will cut them off and bring them back to the main room. So here we all are back in the main room. If I wanted to relaunch the breakout rooms, I can just click the breakout rooms button again, and I can open the same rooms I had previously, or I can recreate them again, either automatically or manually using the same process if you wanted to shuffle the rooms around. For example, if you're doing multiple activities throughout the lecture and you want students working in different groups. So, as always, I hope you found this helpful. I also kind of hope we will reach a point where we have fully returned to in-person learning and I no longer need to keep making these tutorials, but while a bunch of people are out there teaching online, I want to keep making these to help people out. So if you have a question, a comment, or a request for another tutorial, please leave a comment below this YouTube video. Thank you.